your online presence describes yourself um, as focusing on big data, and that's clearly where you're where you're at. So, what would you say? What do you think that a software engineer ought to know about the problems of big data? Uh, I think it starts for a software engineer thinking about what is data and why data is important. So coming at it from my 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 background is, hey, I wasn't always a data engineer. I was a software engineer. I was heads down writing code. And for me, my interactions with data was, I'll write out a file or I will put something into a database. And that was my interactions with data. Hey, you wanna change the schema in the database? Oh, go for it. You just change that column name. You do a field promotion, you do whatever, just make sure it codes uh, still compiles and we've changed the code or we write out that file. And then, uh, so the, the point I always try to make to software engineers is, hey, when you do big data or data or data products, especially, it isn't just, hey, let's throw some data into a database. It's far different. It's, it's much more rigorous. It is making sure whatever you put in that database, whether maybe that's a pub sub feed and Kafka or Pulsar, uh, maybe that is still putting something into a database, but maybe now it's a NoSQL database. You're creating a data product that is going to live on in a different way. And so when we think about how that lives on, it isn't a year, two years, it's often 10 years. So we have 10 years of data in that. And we need to really think about how that data is laid out I would say the other big part for software engineers is the types of problems we're trying to solve in the big data space. We're dealing with distributed systems. So when with distributed systems, we're taking, instead of just one computer and we're throwing it at that problem, we're taking several different computers and throwing them at that problem. And when you throw several different computers at that problem, that brings in its own problems. I know on your channel, you've talked about microservices and I completely agree with you on that because most software engineers have never dealt with distributed systems problems. Yeah. Once they get into the microservices, then they say, oh, <laughs> this is what they mean. It's only once you've shot yourself in the foot that you say, oh, <laughs> that's what you were talking about. And so now with microservices, you kind of have a point to point, but with big data, you're often here's this data product that's being used by all sorts of things. And now instead of one problem, you have 10 manifestations of the same problem. Yeah. It's a really difficult problem. So maybe it's helpful. I'll give my definition of a data engineer. My definition of a data engineer is a software engineer. And that's really key software engineer who specialize their skills in big data. And the, so there's obvious, there's two definitions out there. A, there's one data engineer who's much more SQL focused, very, uh, doesn't really know how to program. That's one type of data engineer, but the type of data engineer I'm talking about that we need for these big data systems is one who actually knows how to code and, and no SQL. So there's, yes. uh, there, there, there's an important part there. It's and SQL. It's, yeah. you probably dealt with this too, of if you only know one tool, then you can't choose the right tool for the job. So if you only know SQL, you will do several backflips. Perhaps those backflips will be impossible, or you'll get this query that is this nested mess of a thing. And you're saying, well, why are you doing that? It's because it has to be only done in SQL instead of, well, let's do some code and let's do some SQL and, and together they can be happy family. Yeah, and and the, 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 free, the freedom to um be able to make those choices but understand them in the context of keeping the data reliable and usable and all those sorts of things i think is an important aspect of you know modern ways of working to make fast progress if i'm a developer working on some system i don't want to farm out the responsibility for updating the schema to somebody else if i've got to make a change that's part of my job it seems to me would you agree with that yeah it, it's important so uh, schema, I, I think schema is so important. And this is often where your sort of DBAs come in as they've lived in this world of schema for quite a while. So sometimes when, I'm, when we're mentoring a team or mentoring a company, sometimes there'll be this, uh, the DBA says, well, what do I do? And oftentimes it's this person who actually is 
really responsible for looking at the schema. They're trying to uh, <clears throat> <coughs> and cut that part out. Here, let me take a water. Uh, so sometimes there's this problem in between the data engineering team and the software engineering team. So software engineering, creating some kind of backend system, creating some kind of data product. And there's this problem of who is the person that handles the scheme in between the two? Mm -hmm. So they're not, the, the software engineering team is thinking, oh, if we put somebody in here, they're going to make us go slow and they're going to prevent us from moving fast and breaking stuff. And here's this team over here saying, please don't break our stuff. It breaks all these downstream systems and it, we yeah. get buzzed at night and paged at night. So oftentimes what I'm looking for is somebody in between there who's really loves themselves some schema, understands that schema. And usually that's the DBA. So that DBA is often uh, kind of there saying, seeing this change of, oh, I don't know how to program, but so what do I do? And oftentimes we're putting them in that and part of that of, here, watch the schema, be in charge of the schema. And as the uh, work with the software engineers, as they want to change that schema so that we can make sure that the, the schema evolution is correct. This is a, a common question sometimes is, should I have my data engineers do software engineering, mm -hmm. regular software engineering? For example, should they be creating rest endpoints? Should they be doing some of the backend coding? Or uh, sometimes they'll ask it as, does full stack mean that you do the back end, you do the front end, and you do the data engineering too. And the answer is you probably shouldn't have your data engineers do that, that full stack simply because there, there are fewer data engineers out there. They're usually more expensive. So it's more of a constraint based thing than they should be able to do it. But you can find more plentiful other software engineers who can do the other part let the data engineers focus on on that part. The risk with that, I get so 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 so, so I, I understand what you're saying in terms of the practical constraints. The risk with that strategy is that you have you know a, a, a cadre of data engineers somewhere building their own ivory tower. You know, so so how do how do you how do you prevent that being a problem? How, how do you keep it real? I guess is, is is my question. You you keep it real by having them do agile basically mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. one of those core precepts of agile is you work with your end customer yeah and and sometimes i i have hit data engineers where i say well who is your customer and have you talked to them lately yeah. and sometimes the answer is i don't know and therefore i've never talked to them yeah. so data engineers hey you need to find your customers and you need to work with them and and that prevents that ivory tower. And that isn't to say that I've, I haven't ever hit the ivory tower. I've seen millions, tens of millions put into projects of ivory tower projects that went nowhere yeah. because they never established need. They never worked with their customer. They created this thing that, you know, the field of dreams, eventually they're going to come. Yeah. And the people never came. It wasn't <laughs> that. They, they set up something that they thought would work, but they never connected to the business and said, hey, uh, what should we do? And in yeah. my book, I actually talk about that. I have a, an entire chapter talking about what should you do to connect to the business? Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, Paco Nathan, actually says that there's a, there's a fourth, uh, I guess, person or group that's the business, the business expert, the business domain person that's mm -hmm. there to make sure hey, we're doing the right things and we're not creating ivory towers. Yeah, yeah, yeah.